How's it going? Uh, this is going to be my review of the Nano P8. I originally bought this because I was looking for some sort of GPD-like device, like small, compact, would fit in my pocket so I could take out. And just so I could go out and just get whatever I needed to get done. The specs it has is an Intel Pentium N4200 clocked at about 1.1 gigahertz that could boost up to 2.4. I suppose it wouldn't do that unless it was on um, a charger. It has Intel HD graphics 505. I wonder if that's any good. I have tried to game with it a little bit, but not too much. It's running Windows 10 Home. It's supposed to come with a copy of Windows Office Mobile, but I don't know where that is. The screen is actually one of the highlights of this like little tiny thing. It's running at uh, 1920 by 10, 1200, and it is an IPS. So it looks good, and it's super sharp. Too bad it's only running at 60 hertz, but considering how small this is, you wouldn't have to you wouldn't be going anywhere higher than that. It only has 8 gigs of RAM, but uh, it's good enough for something this small. One of the downsides is that it only has a 64 gigabyte eMMC uh, soldered on drive. I can't call it an SSD because it, it's about as fast as a hard drive, if not slower at some times. It has really shoddy Wi-Fi as in it does you can connect to 2.4 but not 5 gigahertz and the the Bluetooth implementation isn't as good either it has only version 4.0 which is which will connect to most things when it comes to the camera it has a 0 0.3 megapixel sensor I don't know who makes it or what's up with it reportedly it only weighs about 560 grams I don't have anything to test that, so I'm just going to have to take their word. Apparently the battery runs at 7.6 volts, and it has about 2,050 milliamp hours. So you could, what I usually get is about an hour of heavy use, or 3 to 4 if I'm just doing light text document editing and stuff. It has... A USB-C that uh, can also be used as USB 2.0 hub if you have a USB-C hub. It has USB-C, it has micro HDMI, it actually comes with the adapter to regular HDMI in the box. It has an aux and an XD card which I usually use with uh, some Samsung 512 gig to expand all the storage I need. Don't mind this, by the way. This is me being not delicate with this thing. Let's see. On the other side, we don't have anything. On the back, we have some grills for no included fan. But what makes my unit unique from the others is that it does have a rear fan. I'm covering up the Windows thing. I bought this fan on, I believe, eBay. It was the smallest fan I could find that wouldn't take over a month to ship. The black stuff around it is uh, liquid electrical tape that I used to seal the thing so air, air wouldn't get in. Uh, another thing, it also has electrical tape just to keep the flow of the air. It doesn't push much air, but considering it all, it it's only like a 15 watt chip, it doesn't need to, so... Uh, it works for me. It drops temperatures. The stock, usually, like, if you're just doing stuff, it gets heavy, it gets hot. It'll go up to 80 degrees with this and uh, some thermal pads under it to keep the heat spread it out. It'll drop down to, like, 60, which is a major improvement over the stock performance. Oh, yeah, the keyboard is originally in Japan, Japanese because that's the market it's tailored to. So to fix it, I just bought some sticky notes, cut up the glued, the section that has glue, and just stuck them on. 
Uh, there are some buttons that are weird because they don't have any actual purpose once you use the US layout. I made a big mistake of uh, formatting it because I was like, uh, oh, it's running on like Japanese Windows. I, I, I can't understand 90% of this, so I'm just going to reinstall Windows, which ended up being a huge mistake because uh, the drivers on on the original ISO are not readily available, readily available unless you know where to look and I couldn't find them. I had to post on Reddit and get some guy to copy and paste his drivers and then I downloaded them and I'll try to make the link uh, to download them in the description just in case you get the same error I did because I, I messed up. And if somebody has this and you haven't downloaded and if you haven't, if you have the original ISO, if you could make a copy on it, of it and provide it, that would be amazing. You would be helping out so much people, so many people. Let's see what. Honestly, I don't. It's all right to use. It's not. It's not a main PC, but uh, let's see. I usually just use it when I'm on the go and I don't have access to my main PC, so I'll just use Parsec or TeamViewer and just remote in because that way no actual compute is happening inside the machine and it'll give you way better lifespan. Let's see other things about this. Let's see if I got anything more on my writing. Oh yeah, the company that supports that made like not the company that sells it, the company that makes it, uh, they have called it on this type of model because the Nanote, the original one, the P8, and the Nanote Next, they are all essentially the same device but with different specifications. And I talked to the manufacturer about them, and after asking them about these models they told me that yeah they're end of life they no longer produce or support them so if you have drivers do not get rid of them because they could possibly be the only drivers out there i saw that in their manufacturer page before uh they left they dinged the end of life that this could be an optional, um, what's it called, fingerprint scanner, which if I could find the piece that turns it into that, I could totally make another video of how to install it, and that would be actually really interesting. It does have a 360 degree hinge for if you want to use it in tablet mode. Originally, in the Windows ISO that's in Japanese, you can uh, set it to go to tablet mode when you go like this. And it even has auto rotation, which is another driver that you won't get on the regular release. But uh, if you add this, if you have the original ISO, it'll just automatically go into tablet mode. So if you just want to use it like this, you have like an external mouse and keyboard, you can. Or if you just have a regular wireless mouse, you just do that. The auto rotation is a blessing. Most of the time I'll just use it for simple applications like over here I have I got Minesweeper chest and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, since I'm here I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick disassembly so that there's a disassembly in English on YouTube. One second. Okay, I have gotten my screwdriver and stuff ready so we're just gonna go at it. It has six screws on the bottom, two of them. These, this one, okay, let me just turn it around. Ah, oh, man, this, I'm gonna have to blur the thing out and post. This one and this one are longer than the other four, and I lost this one, so I had to use a different one, but do keep in mind that because it could get dangerous. I'm just going to go ahead and disassemble this really quickly so I can show the internals and give a little or overview about what's inside of this. 
don't mind the bending that won't happen on you your unit it's only because mine is very heavily modified Oh well. Up. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that was the last one. There we go. Oh no. I gotta be careful because that. What I did was uh, to get the fan to work, I simply wired it up to the USB 5 volt and ground. So it looks like that on the inside. Very jank, I know. Oh, that's not supposed to be there. That's rough, bud. Yeah, I used a bunch of thermal pads just to make sure the unit was adequately cooled. And I did accidentally burn off part of the um, keyboard ribbon, so I did have to solder some wires to what used to be the ribbon and just wire them up to the regular keyboard. Another jank solution. Oh yeah, there's also a mod you can do I saw from a Japanese YouTuber of adding a M.2 expansion bay for drives. I couldn't get it to work, but I think I just messed up some soldering steps. So I think it's possible, but I'm not going to try because I destroyed this unit enough. I don't think I should tamper with it any more than I absolutely have to. The speakers, they sound all right enough. Good enough. I'm just going to... Okay, let's just... We're just going to take some close-ups of all the important parts, like the battery, battery like 7.6 volts, blah, blah, blah. If you need the, the numbers, there they are. The battery connector. Let's see. I think I'm going to have to add arrows, but... Uh, one of those is a keyboard backlight, if I remember correctly, and the other one is just a regular uh, something or other for the touchpad. And that red and black is for the speakers, of which this unit has two. One here, and one here. They are front-facing, which is pretty good, I suppose. Here's this. A jink. The, this is a common part number in this machine, CY07Q, so if you need anything, uh, that might help at some point. Just a little overview of the board. Actually, I'm going to take the heat spreader off just so more parts are visible in case somebody needs to look at somebody else's computer and they need help. Okay, there's one. There we go, too. Gotta be careful with those connectors, they're very fragile. Eventually those connectors will burn out because they have so much resistance, but not today. I did it. It comes with a thermal pad on the CPU originally, but I just changed it out by for thermal paste because I just think it's better. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna try to get a close-up of this. It does have unknown RAM. It's actually funny that the RAM is actually bigger than the CPU. There's your, I think it's that's the power that I see. This is the modem slash Bluetooth receiver by Realtek. I have no idea what this is. And some MOSFETs, some capacitors, nothing too hard, too much to write home about. I do know that behind this, let, let me just get it in the middle, this MOSFET, under that, the, the EMMC storage is supposed to be under there, so if you flip the board around, after taking it out, it will go in there. I'm curious to know what this is. I might probe at it later, but that could be interesting at some point. 
this is the display cable yeah i already went over that there's the uh antenna for the receiver this is um something i don't remember what it is but i'll add it in post if i figure it out and that looks like it's it it's not a very complicated machine so let me just get a full frame picture of it just because why not there we go. So I'm going to close this out and give my closing thoughts on it. Personally, it's not a terribly flat, fast computer, but, uh, oh no, let's see. It's not terribly flat, fast, but if all you do is edit Word documents and you need something that doesn't weigh your backpack down at all because it's only 560 grams, I'd say this is really good. If you could, I would say to sprint for the I know next, which has a faster processor. I don't recall what this processor is, but I do know it's about 15 to 20 percent faster in single and multi-threaded performance. So honestly, you should just get that if you have the money to afford it. It's only, I believe, it's about 300 dollars. So eh, I would, I would have gotten it if it was released, if it was available in on eBay at the time. There we go. Heat sink is back on. Personally, I don't recommend all the pads that I put in, but uh, given that I had extras, I just said might as well. Hopefully this thing goes back into one piece. Let's see. Other things I could tell about this uh, laptop is that it's like if you expect if you go from a regular like gaming desktop to this you're going to notice how much slower it is but if you're just uh if you're you can deal with that i would totally recommend it because the only other offerings are like gpd pocket which is running uh what's called uh atom cores like the the CPUs that start with Z something or other, and it's just a random not nonsense naming scheme. Those cores are terribly slow, and even this two hundred dollar laptop is way faster than uh, the I think the GPD Pocket One and Two. I think the Pocket Two had like an M series, which is just overclocked Atom cores. All in all, this is a really good machine, and if you have the money, might as well, because it'll come in handy one day when you're in the middle of nowhere and you need something to compute, and that's about it. I do have some gripes with this, since the, CP since the fan is kind of uh, raised, I have to set the machine in a way that will make it lean back so the fan won't get suffocated but usually if you're on a flat surface it'll give it a little bit of space to breathe but most of the time I'm just happy it's blowing air around so it doesn't get so the air doesn't stay in one place and just start heating up and heating up the rest of the machine so yeah that is about it I hope this was useful in any way like and subscribe